John Serafini, CEO of Bullpie 360. Welcome to Australia in Space TV. Thank you. I take it you might have been in Singapore before, but welcome to the GSTC, our 16th edition. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit about Hawkeye 360. I saw your panel uh, on the maritime domain uh, earlier this afternoon as well. But yeah, your clusters of satellites and the business model that you're doing. A little bit more about Hawkeye 360. So Hawkeye 360 produces commercial RF solutions. Uh, we have 23 satellites on orbit. We are the first to ever fly our satellites commercially in formation. So we have a satellite in front, a satellite behind, and a third that oscillates back and forth. And that unique geometry allows us to triangulate signals down to a couple hundred uh, meters, right. depending upon the signal strength. Um, mostly we support governments, internationally and for the U.S. government, defense, intelligence, security value propositions. Uh, and we have today, as I mentioned, 23 satellites going to, let's see, uh, 35 by the end of uh, this year. So 23 satellites, not 23 clusters. 23 satellites are flying clusters of three, three, plus two other satellites that we recently bought for Maxon. Got it. Now those that that, that three in the os oscillation is that the satellite moving to the back and forth, or are they moving in a rotation like that? How does that actually work? Yeah. So one here, one here, and then a third that's in the middle going back and forth. Got it. Right there. So across them. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Very slowly. Nice. Very, very slow. And what's your orbits at the moment? How much coverage have you got with 23? Yeah, so we fly in low Earth orbit, uh, about 550 to 575 kilometers up in space. Uh, with today's 23 satellites, we're roughly every 40 minutes of revisit rate. Yeah. Uh, we're going to add 12 more satellites over the course of this coming year, 2024. Right. So we'll be down around 20 to 25 minutes of revisit rate by the end of the year. And that's one half of the of the coin. The other half is latency, so how long it takes to deliver the data once you've collected it. And so for us, with all the, the ground stations that we have and the, the cross uh, uh, talk capabilities to be able to move data, we're, we're at about 60 minutes uh, okay. of delivery speed. After flyover? For priority, yeah. yeah right. So we collect the data, we analyze it, we process it, we deliver it down to the ground. On a priority basis, it's about 60 minutes. So you're around 40 to 45 minutes at the moment, you want to get down into the 20s. What, what's the business driving that? Is that clients driving that? Or, yeah, wh where's the, the business model to say we've got to get that time down? So we spend a lot of time talking to sovereign customers who are very specific in their requirements. And we define our capabilities based upon what the customer needs. Uh, and what we're hearing from our customers is that more revisit is better than less. Yep. They want us down closer to 20 minutes for tactical intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance applications, particularly in conflict areas. So we have to deliver to that. Yep. And that requires us to continue to build additional satellites, launch additional satellites, and take advantage of the decreasing launch cost per cluster. How much is that launch cost coming down? I mean, you've got so many this year, and who's your main launch platform? We've been blessed to have two. Uh, we've used Rocket Lab in the past, but predominantly yep. SpaceX on their Falcon 9 platforms, and, and the, the cost is coming down pretty significantly. What's important is to have a, a, a varied orbitology. So we have different LTANs for where we can put our satellites to make sure that we are not uniquely uh, focused on one area of the globe, but rather we have a varied constellation with a, a orbitology all around the Earth which comes from putting our satellites into different LTANs. Dedicated launch vehicles provide that flexibility to us. The, does that drive costs down on the data itself as well? How do you keep that, you know, the more you launch, the more data you get, therefore customers are thinking, well, it should be cheaper. How, well, how does a, that work? It's a function of the, the, uh, the, the signals that they want us to collect and how difficult it is or is not to collect that data. It's a function of how quickly they want that data delivered and in what format. If a customer wants raw IQ, um, that's one price point. If they want process data, that's another uh, price point. If they want data analytics, that's turnkey, that can be used immediately, that's a, a different uh, price right. point. So we have to work with the customers depending upon what they want. Are you creating new business models here? Is this something you kind of, not making it up as you go along, but yeah. you're having to talk to customers and work out what, what they want, how long they might want it for. Yeah, how much of this is, is new? Uh, because it's the new sort of civil sector of space, mm. or are you just using the traditional models that we've always had and put it going? This is that's how it's done in the past, and we're just going to do it that way. Well, the company's DNA is, is one of a pioneer. 
we trailblazed here. We were the first ones ever to do commercial RF, the first ones ever to fly commercial satellites in formation. Um, so everything that we've done in terms of introducing this new concept to the market has been trailblazing. Um, it's required us to be flexible and to be agile and to find new ways in which to work with customers. And to be flexible and say, hey, this works or this doesn't work. Presently, our value proposition is kind of offered in three ways. One is we deliver data and data analytics as a service. The second is that we provide services on demand with the customer to help them uh, interpret and understand the data. And then the third is we're willing to build sovereign assets that are dedicated to those particular customers and can provide a constant source of data that's a cue just to those, those customers. Do you think the customers are becoming a little bit more flexible as well? Yeah. As they learn about true. this? Traditionally, customers were buying data um, or buying systems from defense industrial base and companies that specialized in building dedicated systems. And as the costs of data have come down and the veracity of that data has been proven, um, customers are more willing to, to be able to buy it as a service. Yeah. The last one is, you mentioned, uh, you know, we obviously was on a cybersecurity panel, you're in the maritime domain and looking at national security, sure. and one of the key messages which was really interesting is you design security by design into your business, into, the, into your platforms, yeah. because you have that end customer in mind that will demand that security context. That's not necessarily easy though, uh, so do you find that that adds cost? Um, it's the essential way to do business. What's your key message to others in the industry to go, security by design is the way to go because it's the only way to go. Well, we've adopted a zero trust architecture to make sure that we yep. can provide the highest level of security and data integrity to our customers. And we do everything we can to stand behind that pledge. Beautiful. Uh, John Serafini, CEO, welcome to Singapore. Enjoy the rest of GSTC. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, also, you're based in Cal Boston. Boston, okay, there you go. You mentioned Silicon Valley. You're not based out of, or a startup out of Silicon Valley? No. Okay, fair enough. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time in Singapore, and thank, thank you. you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Excellent. Thank Good you. On, John.